What's up everyone, this is Blade Bananas. welcome to a new video. In this video, I want to showcase three battles where we deep dive into each of the battles to show exactly what's going on through my head and what's going on inside my opponent's head. Um, and we're going to look for the lose conditions in every match and the win condition in every match. Because um, generally, if you can find the lose condition for yourself, you know how to avoid a lose condition. Um, and if you know the win condition for yourself, then you can try to go for a play that makes you win the match, right? So let's uh, let's look into the first battle. Um, and let me know if you guys enjoyed this type of analysis. So in the first game, actually, uh, I should introduce my team a little bit. Um, I'm running with a Mana Buzz, Empoleon, and Chris Chrysalia. Um, I just love the Penguin, right? Alright, so Mana Buzz leads into a Talonflame. Um, in this matchup, we actually outpace to the foul play, but um, one Brave Bird will do a lot of damage to us. It will not KO our Mana Buzz, but it will do a lot of damage. So what I want to do in this matchup is chip it down a little bit, because if you look at the back line we have, we have Empoleon that is very good against Talon Flame, right? And Empoleon with energy will be very nice. Um, and then we have Cresselia which is um, very terrible against the Talon Flame, so we want to avoid this matchup at all cost. That, that's why we're staying in this matchup and just trying to do as much chip damage as we can to this uh, Talon Flame. So we got off two foul plays, and I think we grab a shield right here. Yep. So now we grab a shield, right? That is extremely good for us. I'm going to let this go. If they Brave Bird us, um, then they're probably going to swap out right after, and when Brave Bird doesn't KO, they go for the Flame Charge. They actually go for the double Flame Charges. So here, I think, I recognize this doesn't KO me either. Um, I know they're go going for another flame charge. So what should I do here? They're double buffed. If I stay in this matchup, they're going to farm me down. And then they're going to throw a, uh, a double attack uh, attack buffed, uh, attack boosted uh, flame charge at my Empoleon. And my Empoleon will not appreciate that, right? So what I decide to do is go into Empoleon. This forces my opponent to make a decision. They have to swap out, or their talent flame is just going to get farmed down all the way. So my opponent is very smart. He knows that uh, we, we're trying to force him to uh, get out of there. Um, and also they have to, because if they stay in there, they're going to get farmed down by my Empoleon. Even though they're going to do some damage to um, our Empoleon with the fire damage, it hits for neutral to Empoleon, right? But... Um, it's definitely better in their interest to get out of that matchup, even though it means uh, that they're losing all the attack uh, boosts. Um, and also they have a pretty decent counter for us um, in Shift Tree. Shift Tree win CMP against Empoleon, which I wasn't sure about. So what, what I decided to do is shield one Leaf Blade, right? And I thought at this point I was thinking that I win CMP with Empoleon. So what I'm actually going to try to do is uh, throw three Waterfalls. Um, that's when their when my opponent shift tree gets to a leaf blade, and that's when I try to throw the drill pack. But as you guys are going to see, I actually backfire um, because I'm trying to do three at throw here, but Empoleon actually loses CMP to a shift tree, so that is definitely a mistake by me. Uh, but at this point, I'm committed because I have too much energy on my Empoleon. I can't let this Empoleon go down, right? I have way too much energy, and now it depends on what they have in the back. So they have a fire tap in the lead, a uh, grass tap in the back. Um, we KO the shift tree. We see a Venusaur. Um, Venusaur is not great for us, but um, we still have a Mana Buzz that is very good against uh, um, a Venusaur. Let's see what I do here. They actually no shield. Um, that means I could just stay in and chip down with the waterfalls. So this forces my opponent to throw a move at us because now they have two very low Pokemon, right? Even though they have a shield, if they don't throw at us, our fast move pressure is just going to take down my opponent at this point. So what my opponent is forced to do is throw some energy right before I get to the uh, drill pack, which is also a very good play by my opponent. My opponent tries to farm as much energy as possible and then throws this move uh, to, take our, uh, to take down our Empoleon. But we're okay with this because um, now it means that they're, uh, uh, they use some energy on their uh, Venusaur. So now what should, what should I come back with? I know that they have a Talonflame in the back. Um, 
Talonflame doesn't have much energy. And I have a Manda Buzz that's really low in the back as well. Uh, which doesn't have uh, much energy either. So I definitely want to avoid the Talonflame matchup with my uh, Cresselia, right? So what I do here is I bring out my Cresselia, actually. Uh, Cresselia can absolutely absorb, absorb a Frenzy Plant from the Venusaur. And I'm actually looking to farm all the way down. So my opponent gets to a Frenzy Plant right there, and then he swaps out into Talonflame. This is a very, very good play, because this forces me to swap out of here. I can't stay in here too much, because if their Talonflame gets a move on us, then their uh, Venusaur will get off a Frenzy Plant to KO our Cresselia. Um, so what I want to do is force their Talonflame to throw energy, but not on my Cresselia. I need my opponent to throw energy uh, with the Talonflame, but um, I can't let them throw it into my Cresselia, so I force out that last shield. I know I can still tank a Frenzy Plant, as you guys see there. Um, I swap out when they get to the move, but my opponent is also very smart that uh, they try to over farm here. But fortunately, their health is way too low that they can't uh, incinerate down my Amanda Buzz. So at this point, I know my opponent is one incinerate away from the next move, but if I throw energy into this, that means I will have no energy. If, when I come back in with my Cresselia, so our Amanda Buzz is going to go down here. When we come back in with Cresselia, if I throw energy here, um, if I throw energy here, I'm definitely not going to have energy versus the Venusaur, and the Venusaur might get up to two Frenzy Plant, which will take out our Cresselia. So I'm committed to uh, farm down this Talonflame all the way, and fortunately, we were able to do it. I recognize that my opponent is in the Grass Knot range because the Venusaur was very low there, and now all I have to do is click on the Grass Knot for the CMP tie to take out this uh, Venusaur. So at the end of the day, we recognized our loose condition was for the Talonflame to land a move onto our Cresselia. That's why we make for we make swap immediately into the Mana Buzz when they come into the um, Talonflame. Also, we had to take out that last shield because uh, taking out that last shield ensured that our Chry Cresselia can finish off the Venusaur in the back, right? So very well played, uh, good game to my opponent so these are like uh, little plays that really makes the difference in the end game because you have to recognize the loose condition and you have to recognize uh, the win condition um, which c can be the same thing but um, um, a lot of times you have to recognize what you want to avoid and what you want to do right so in this matchup I see a um, I see a Obama snow Immediately, I think what they could have in the back, it, there's a very common line of a Bama Snow, um, Sableye, and a uh, Azumarill in the back. So I recognize that if I get Shield Advantage or Energy Advantage, I could absolutely sweep in the endgame with my Empoleon. But I have to get out of this matchup with my Mana Buzz. My Mana Buzz is only good against their Sableye, so I need to draw out that Sableye and uh, get some energy with my Mana Buzz after our Cresselia goes down. The good thing about Cresselia versus Sableye is that the Moonblast can actually uh, uh, pressure shields for my opponents. Uh, because if they don't shield, it's going to do a lot of damage, almost one hit KO. So my opponent shields here. That means I'm not going to shield anything on my Cresselia. I think Cresselia already did its job here. We got the shield advantage. And I recognize my win condition here is two shield and polio. I'm betting because we saw that Sableye, it makes me more um, confident that they have a, an Azumarill and they have a uh, Obama Snow in the back, which Empoleon can absolutely handle both, right? I'm trying to get to the uh, another Moonblast. My, my opponent throws here uh, on the CMP, which is a very good play, but that means they're out of energy with their um, Sableye, so this is very good for my uh, Mana Buzz. So my Mana Buzz has to take out the Sableye. And I think my opponent will go for the return here when I bring out the mana buzz. So if I was on, I was if I was on the opponent's side, and I have a Zumeril and a Bama Snow, what's the best play here? Is to swap out because a Bama Snow and a Zumeril both beat the mana buzz very confidently. But fortunately, my opponent didn't see that play, so they're actually staying here. Um, 
and letting our mana buds comfortably take out their um, Sableye here, I believe. They can go for the return all they want, but what I'm really looking to do here is just sacrifice my mana buds because I know that my mana buds is of zero value to me currently. It doesn't do anything against um, the Azumo in the back. It doesn't do anything against um, doesn't do anything against a uh, uh, Obama Snow right without energy. That's why I'm also constantly over farming here. I'm farming just before they get to the return to make sure that they um, they have to shield or we take this out and we maximize the energy gain right. Uh, that was actually a CMP tie. My opponent threw the foul play because they also realized they're not going to get to the return. Now I'm going to instant swap. I have a little bit of residual energy. Now I have two shields against the Bomba Snow. My opponent is not swapping out, which um, also makes me more confident that there's a, uh, a Zoom in the back. Right? So I think I'm actually going to shield this. My opponent can bait me twice with Weather Ball, um, and they still will not get to an energy ball. Um, so obviously they bait the first time. It's too risky for me not to shield because energy ball will almost one hit KO. That is also a loose condition. Um, sometimes you want to call the bait, but in this case, um, in this case, calling the bait incorrectly will cost you, uh, cost me the game, right? Uh, because I know they're not going to get to another energy ball here. I'm going to let this go. Uh, actually, I'm going to shield this again. Uh, because I don't want to get hit by an energy ball. My opponent is very close to the energy ball, but like I said earlier, um, they can bait, but they're not going to get to another energy ball. So we take out this Obama Snow. And let's see if, if they have a Zoom roll. They do have a Zoom roll in the back. So I'm thinking um, if they have Hydro Pump, then we have to try to catch it, right? But actually, one Hydro Pump doesn't KO, so I'm going to see the first one. Just let it go. I think he actually only did six bubbles, so I know this is not a hydro pump. Um, it's just a play rough. Um, if I can land two drill packs, then I could probably stay in this matchup to force my opponent to throw some energy, and then I can comfortably get to an aerial ace uh, in addition to my two drill packs, right? And then I should be able to take out this uh, zoom rail very comfortably. My lose condition is letting my opponent get to two moves and then take out my. Um, um, and Polion, and then take out my uh, Mana Buzz. Let's see, so I'm trying to catch a move, but I absolutely miscounted. <laughs> I don't think my opponent was at a move, but this is also fine, because we have plenty of health on our Mana Buzz. By swapping into Mana Buzz, I force my opponent to throw energy into the Mana Buzz anyways, because if they don't throw energy here, they're gonna get taken out by my Mana Buzz. And just like that, uh, we get to the Aerial Ace, uh, before my opponent gets to two moves or farm us to 100 energy and we take out the Azumarill. Um And let's look into another match where we have a similar team comp. Um, this person was actually an expert. I think he was just on his way to Legend and he played extremely well. So again, we see Obama Snow, right? And immediately I'm thinking they have uh, Sableye and Azumo in the back. So I know that my uh, Mana Buzz is pretty much useless besides taking out their Sableye. I go into my Cresselia right away. My opponent comes into Sableye, extremely smart play, right? Um, Sableye beats uh, this uh, uh, Cresselia pretty comfortably if they use shields. But as you guys are going to see, my opponent doesn't use shield. He knows that my Psycho Cuts, my fast moves are not going to do enough damage to him. So he just lets it go. He knows he's still going to win this matchup very comfortably uh, in the zero shields. So what he does here is he goes for the foul play. Um, and I actually think he doesn't throw energy for the next foul play, but he definitely gets there. I'm going to get the grass knot off here. So I do get off the grass knot. So my opponent has two choices, right? He could either shield and farm me down with the save white and come out with a lot of energy. Or... My opponent could let it go down and then just farm down my Cresselia with either Obama Snow or Azumarill. And as you guys are gonna see, my opponent makes the smart play of just letting the Sableye guy, uh, letting the Sableye go, because he recognizes that by farming me down with the Sableye, the energy essentially will go to waste against my um, against my Mana Buzz, and he knows that he's two Pokemon in the back. Um, Azumarill and Obama Snow will absolutely destroy my Mana Buzz. So he makes a really good play, just let it go down. And now we're at even shields. If we don't have shield advantage, 
it's very hard for Empoleon to take down both Pokemon. So as you guys are going to see, they come in and farm me down with the Obama Snow. He has loaded energy here. Absolutely loaded energy right here. And now this puts me into a really tough situation because I know they have a Zoomer in the back. So I need to preserve my Empoleon in order to take out this uh, Obama Snow. But then at the same time, my Manda Buzz is completely useless against a, a Zoomer in the back. Um, so as you guys are going to see, I decided to sacrifice my uh, Manda Buzz. Um, but here, I think there isn't much I can do at this point. Because uh, just purely based on team comp at this point. At even shields, my Manda Buzz loses to both of their Pokemon. At even shields, my Empoleon has very uh, big trouble against the Obama Snow. And then... Uh, the Empoleon also has to deal with the full health of Zumro, right? We actually don't even get to the Aerial Ace. That's just how much energy my opponent got uh, with the Obama Snow. So I will just let the uh, Mana Buzz go down. And now my Empoleon can't really do anything here. It has no energy lead. Um, and my Mana Buzz has no energy lead, unlike last time, because we didn't get the farm um, against the Sableye. So my opponent here makes a very, very smart play, right? He recognizes he has two Pokemon that are good against my Mana Buzz, so he doesn't need to win Switch Advantage. He also recognizes um, um, getting farm with the Obama Snow will be very nice uh, against whatever we have in the back. He could kind of predict that we needed a, a Charm counter um, for the Mana Buzz. We also need an Azumarill counter, so he was uh, guessing that we could have a Grass-type Pokemon in the back. And Obama Snow can absolutely handle my Mana Buzz and a Grass-type Pokemon very easily, right? So it was very smart of him to just come out with the Obama Snow to farm down the Cresselia, just letting go of the Sableye, because the Sableye has no play against my Mana Buzz. And my opponent is going to take this game very comfortably here. Um, he has two shields. He then use any shields on the Sableye, and um, yeah, so now my opponent will comfortably win this game. Um, extremely difficult uh, game for me. Um, essentially, I think my opponent's team has um, will always be my team if they play this way. If they always play this way, letting the Sableye go down, um, then farm down with with the Obama Snow, I will always always lose against this team. But um, because last time my opponent shielded with the save white, we were able to take advantage of it and uh, win that game. Um, yeah, so a lot of times, as you guys can see, there's a lot of th thought process going, going on. Um, and a lot of times, you have to kind of evaluate the situation as you go. Um, a lot of different plays, just a minor difference, right? So this time my opponent didn't shield, while well, last time my opponent shielded. Just that one shield, just one difference. Both seem like very valid plays from my opponent's side. They could either farm down with the Sableye, come out with a lot of energy, or they could um, uh, let it go down, and then they can farm down with something. Um, and then, then beat my backline with that Pokemon uh, with energy, right? So... Yeah, a lot of times you have to think while you battle, what could be in the back? You have to evaluate what they could have in the back. What's the best strategy to do here? Um, is switch advantage really that important or is shield advantage more important? And then at the end game, you want to see how could I lose this game? What are some things that I have to do to avoid losing here if I'm in a good situation? Do I have to see that they're going to go for a sack swap? Or do I have to see... Um, do I have to see... Um, or do we have to go for a sack swap in order to win the game? Um, so you will always want to look uh, from an analytical point of view. Um, that's how we can always improve as a battler, right? Uh, instead of looking at the leads or whatever, um, you can always turn a bad lead into a winning game. And you could always lose a game even though you have a good lead, right? As you guys saw, we had a really terrible lead with the Bomba Snow twice. And we were able to turn it around the first time, but we didn't turn it around the second time. It all depends on very small details um, to turn a game around. So I hope you guys enjoyed these uh, type of uh, deep level analysis. Let me know um, if you guys want to see more of these uh, deep level analysis on what's going on in each player's mind. And um, yeah, I hope you guys uh, are learning from this, uh, keep improving. Um, don't 
look too much into the ELO score because once you improve as a battler, your your ELO will um, naturally go up as your skill improves, right? So yeah, make sure you drop a like button, uh, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in my next video.